Welcome back, horror fam, to day 22 of our Halloween countdown. So there was this moment where a bunch of people were saying, Hey, wouldn't it be amazing if Pixar made horror? And... Like an idiot, I believed them! I started a YouTube channel for it, and guess what? They lied to me. Or maybe YouTube just hates me. Uh, who knows? Either way, tonight I'm making it happen because someone's got to bring the Pixar horror magic to Halloween. So grab your popcorn, sit back, and let's dive into a world where Pixar gets spooky. Because clearly, someone's got to keep the dream alive. There was a brutal attack here last night. It ended fatally. Rumors are flying around, with some pointing fingers at some silly creepy pasta character, Jeff the Killer. But I know the truth. This... This has the markings of gang violence. A message meant to intimidate. If they turn off the lights in the hallway, everyone will run inside and lock their doors, and the dealers will be able to move around, make deliveries, all unseen. They picked the wrong building. Before we begin our journey, it must be noted, this series explores the world of creepypasta, urban legends, and cryptids, which include themes and content that are intended for a mature audience. Our animations are crafted with an adult audience in mind. Viewer's discretion is advised. A few neighbors and myself decided to band together to create a small, informal neighborhood watch. My window faced the front of the building, so it was great for keeping an eye on people on the street going in and out. But it was also easy to see my apartment from the street, so I had to leave the lights off. I couldn't have the TV either, because of the light. To help the time pass, I did turn on the radio, I just kept it low. The other neighbors in the watch were in bed now. Normally I'd be too. For the next few hours, it's just me and the radio. Oh, come on. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep, Alex. I'm coming. I'm coming. I checked to see who was knocking, but no one was there. That's when I noticed it. Someone had written, go to sleep, on my door. Stunned, confused, and scared, I quickly lock the door and go for my phone. But I don't have a signal. I grab the bat and prepare to go to a neighbor's house to call the cops from there. But before I can act, the power cuts out, plunging everything into an unnerving darkness. The hallway light, my only external reference, vanishes. But... The radio stood on. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. The words were chillingly clear, even amidst the static. I grabbed the radio. It must have batteries or something. I need to find those batteries, pull them out, anything to stop that voice. Go to sleep, Alex. Go to sleep. Alex, go 
to sleep. Go to sleep, Alex. Alex, go to sleep. I spun around, more scared than I'd ever been before. <laughs> go to sleep. Don't, don't, don't come any closer. I'm warning you. Alex, go to sleep. Alex, go to sleep, Alex. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep! It was just your average day at the hospital, except we were absolutely swamped. It's always a bit of a madhouse, but that day, it was like every emergency in the city decided to happen at once. I barely had a moment to catch my breath. Nothing out of the ordinary though, just the usual chaos of the ER. So by the time my shift ended, I was running on fumes. All I could think about was getting home, taking off my shoes, and collapsing into bed. So I finally make it out of the city, and it's late, like after 3 a.m. late. Everything's quiet, and there's this eerie calm as I'm driving along this empty road. I'm trying my best to stay awake, to keep my focus, but I'm just so tired. And then, out of nowhere, there's this loud pop, and it scares the life out of me. My car starts to wobble, and I realize I blew a tire. There I am, in the middle of nowhere, with a flat tire. I manage to pull over, and it's pitch black outside. The kind of darkness where you can't see your hand in front of your face. I reach for my phone to call for help, but of course there's no signal. So there I am, trying to figure out what to do next. I'm squinting out into the darkness, hoping maybe I'll see something. A house with lights on. Anything. And that's when I notice. It looked like people walking to the car. At first I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me. But no, there were people in the distance moving towards me. They looked small. My first thought was, okay, they're far away, that's why they look so tiny. But as they got closer, I realized they weren't far away at all, they were just children, in the middle of nowhere, in the dead of night. It didn't make any sense, and every instinct in me is screaming that something's off. Kids shouldn't be out here. Not at this hour. But there they were, and they were coming closer. My heart was racing. I didn't know what to expect. I was trying to be rational, thinking maybe they were lost, or maybe they could help. Maybe they had a phone with some service. So I crack my window just a bit. Enough to hear them, but not enough to let them reach inside or anything. I call out, asking if they have a phone I could use, or if they lived around there. But they interrupted me. They didn't offer to help or say anything about a phone. Instead, one of them, the taller one, he just looks at me and says, Can you open the door? Just like that. No introduction, no, hey, we're lost to nothing. Just straight to asking me to open the door. And I'm telling you, the way he said it, it wasn't a question. It was more like a demand. My heart skipped a beat. Every alarm bell in my head started ringing. There was something so off about the whole situation. Kids in the middle of nowhere, not scared or crying, 
but asking me to open the door? It was surreal. I knew right then and there, no matter what, I couldn't open that door. Trying to be casual about it, I tell them, no, it's cold out. But the older one wasn't having it. He leans in closer, and he says, it'll be much warmer inside. You really should let us in. And his tone, it was eerily calm, almost persuasive. Then the smaller one, she chimes in. Yeah, it's easy. You just use the handle. As if I don't know how my own car door works. It was like they were trying to overwhelm me, trying to find any way to get inside. And that's when I really got a good look at their eyes. Because up until then, they were hidden pretty well in the dark. But as they moved closer to the light inside the car, I could see their eyes. They were completely black. No whites, just pools of darkness where their eyes should have been. I felt a chill run up my spine. Everything in me screamed that this was wrong. It's one thing to hear about this stuff in stories, but to see it firsthand. To have these, these children with eyes like that trying to get into my car. I was terrified. It was like every instinct I had was telling me to get away. To not let them in under any circumstance. So there I am, trying to keep my cool. But they must have sensed how terrified I was because they start asking non-stop to be let in. Please let us in. We won't hurt you, they kept saying, over and over, like a mantra. But their eyes, those black eyes, told a different story. I couldn't take it anymore. I closed the window, closed my eyes, covered my ears, and started insisting, almost yelling, Leave me alone! Just go away! I was hoping and praying they'd just vanish. And then, out of nowhere, there's this very loud knock-knock on the door. I nearly jumped out of my skin. I thought, this is it. They're going to get in. I need to do something. So I decide I'm going to open my eyes and drive the car with one less tire. What's the worst that could happen? I destroy a wheel or something? But when I finally muster the courage to look, expecting to see those black eyes staring back at me, it's a cop. And the relief I felt seeing him instead of those kids was overwhelming. But when I start trying to explain what happened, his expression changes. I could tell he probably thought I was intoxicated or crazy. There I was, a mess, talking about children with black eyes in the middle of nowhere. The officer asked me to get out of the car to perform a field sobriety test. I look around carefully and take a good look at the officer's eyes before opening the door. As I'm complying with his directions, I mention I'm not intoxicated, I'm a nurse, and I worked a very long shift. He gave me the side eye, so with his permission, I reached into my pocket and showed him my hospital ID. He looked at it, told me to wait in the car, and walked away. He came back five minutes later. We started talking. Sounds like a prank. These kids, you know. I didn't answer. Then he started again, telling me he called for a tow truck. I thank him without looking at him. I was too upset. I know what I saw. He leaned in a little closer and said, Well, I've heard some odd stories about this road. Never seen anything myself, but... His voice trailed off, leaving the thought hanging in the air. The officer must have seen the terror on my face because he stayed with me until the tow truck arrived. The whole time he kept glancing around as if he was expecting those kids to pop up again. It was clear he was taking the situation a lot more seriously now. I wonder what they told him on the radio. With my flat fixed, I continued driving home. But I kept checking my mirrors, half expecting to see those kids again. And that's a wrap for Day 22, Horror Fam. I hope you enjoyed this fun, spooky look at what if Pixar made horror. It's always cool to see how even the most cute-looking animation can take a dark turn. But the scares don't stop here. There's plenty more coming as we continue our Halloween countdown. 
So make sure you're subscribed, hit that notification bell, and get ready for tomorrow's spooky fun. Until then, stay spooky, stay safe, and as always, take good care of yourselves.